Have you ever found yourself crying for no reason? Struggling to concentrate? Is sleep eluding you? Do you feel helpless, hopeless, and you're not sure why? Are you one of the one million people in Australia who suffer from depression each year? The World Health Organization predicts that by 2020, depression will become the second leading cause of disease worldwide. On today's show, we're going to chat to a former AFL football champion who is an advocate for mental health. And later, we have the CEO of Beyond Blue to help us understand a little more about the problems with understanding mental health issues. Hi, I'm Sally Ann, and I'm a clinical psychologist, wife, and mother of four. I love hosting this show because it gives me the opportunity to share inspirational stories and educate us all about the positive people and situations in Australia. True Aussies love their sports. So our first guest is a former AFL player and respected media identity, Wayne Schwoss has used his own experiences with mental illness to advocate for greater community understanding of mental illnesses. Before we start to talk to him though, here is a bit about Wayne's story. In the 96 grand final, the, the, the moment the siren went was the realisation of a boyhood dream. But the paradox of that whole experience was that that particular joyous occasion, it was probably one of my lowest ebbs too because I was clinically depressed and really struggling with it. As good as 96 was, uh, I hated the person that I was. I was living a lie, spending all of my waking hours making sure that everybody else around me uh, thought that I was okay. I would get in as late as I could, put my bag down, go in to the medical room, ball my eyes out, find the courage to go out and compete. I don't know how I did it. I was scared to tell people. I was ashamed, I was embarrassed. I was playing the game I loved. I grew up on this game. I didn't want to lose those opportunities. I didn't want to lose friendships. I didn't want to lose family. I didn't want to lose any of that, so I didn't say anything. One of the hardest challenges is the stigma that comes with a mental illness. I was frightened of what people would think, so I consciously chose to not say anything for 15 years because I was more concerned about what people would think about me and what I was dealing with. The biggest thing that I ever did for myself was own up, become honest, accept the situation, bring those closest to me into what I was dealing with, and I've got my life back. When I did tell my family and the, my closest male mates, I didn't lose them. This is an incredibly difficult and insidious type of illness that you can deal with, but at the same time, if you get help and you ask for help earlier, you can still have a very productive and enjoyable life. If I had my time again, I would unashamedly put my hand up and I would ask for help. So thanks for joining us on the Sally Ann Show today, Wayne. Um, just wondering, what were the first signs that you had depression? When did you first realise? 1993, 23 years of age, um, had played a lot of footy and um, drove home from training one night and started crying at a set of traffic lights. and. For a control freak who liked to control his performance, his preparation, his recovery, I had no control over this. And this happened for two weeks. I mistakenly thought that my fiance at the time was asleep when I would go to bed and cry myself to sleep. But fortunately for me, she wasn't. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the two week period, she said, I'm not sure what's wrong, but 
what I do know is something's not right and we need to go and see the doctor. So we went and saw the doctor and I got diagnosed with depression. That must have been really scary because I can mm -hmm. imagine sitting at the set of lights and just suddenly bursting into tears. You must have really wondered what was wrong, what was going on. Yeah, it was a very confusing time and it was, it was confronting, it was frightening because I, I, I couldn't control it and I had no plausible explanation as to why I was emotional and I've never been one to cry. I'm not much of a crier. Um, and it was a very confusing time, but fortunately for me, um, it was against my better judgment that we went and saw the doctor, but fortunately my partner at the time, now my wife, insisted we went and met, and uh, that was the beginning of a very long journey with mental illness. Because I think at that stage you were quite a successful footy player, you were well known to the public, you know, everyone would have seen you as, you know, the, the great schwatter, I believe. <laughs> everyone, you know, would know you, and, and so it's really interesting for us to hear now that despite all the success that you were having at the time, you were playing a sport that you were really passionate about, you were still feeling this way. And yeah, look, I think that there's two things that I would say, is that material wealth, possessions, awards, success mm -hmm. is irrelevant. I was mm -hmm. well paid, I was doing something that I loved incredibly, yet I was miserable. And I think the other important message to anybody who might be watching the show, whilst I was clinically depressed, I was still able to achieve. So I think and I hope that that gives people some hope that these can be really challenging conditions. The longer we leave them, the harder it is to unravel the mess and then begin to rebuild yourself with new skills. But even no matter how hard it was, I was still able to achieve at a very high level. So that's satisfying to me. But yeah, it was a challenging period of my life. Yeah, because one of the things you actually just said on the clip earlier was in 1996, which was the grand final, you were at actually at your lowest ebb. So tell us about that day for you. Uh, that day was quite surreal because uh, it was the realisation of a, a dream that I'd had for a long time mm. as a young boy. So I was on top of my sporting Everest for a period of time. But at the same time, I was battling because uh, mental illness, in my experience, and you're clinically trained, Sally Ann, but mental mm. illness's purpose is to destroy your self-worth, to erode all confidence, to become, I fell into a very negative frame of mind and on the surface and my athletic ability was fine, but emotionally mm. I was not fine and, and um, it was a really interesting period. Look, I look back on it very fondly, but also look back and think about the six year period from diagnosis to the realisation at 29, I wasn't healthy and I needed to get healthy. Yeah. And one of the things that you also mentioned was that you felt ashamed and embarrassed about it as well. You know, those those things, I think, for those out there who have this condition as well or any other mental illness, that's probably exactly how they feel. Tell us about that. What was that like for you? Well, it was incredibly difficult because for a 15-year period, I made a conscious decision every day, and I don't say that to exaggerate the situation, but I consciously chose for 15 years not to talk about it. And the reason for that was that I was worried about what family, friends, teammates, coaches, my supporters and opposition supporters would think, say, and believe about me if they knew that I was suffering from a mental illness. So a lot of that shame and embarrassment comes from that decision-making process. I regret those decisions, and it wasn't until 15 years after being diagnosed that I thought I'm not going to do this to myself anymore because every day that I did that, I was further away from getting healthy and well. And so when you did finally tell people, so I guess both friends and family, but also the wider community as well, what was the response? Overwhelming. Overwhelmingly positive, overwhelmingly supportive. And when I did go public, it was the first time in 15 years I started to get my life back and I was in control of it slowly but surely with support, with new skills, with an understanding. And it's refreshing to walk into a group of strangers or a family gathering or a group where friends are and be your authentic self as opposed to what I would term a fraud, living a lie, because you were more concerned about what other people would think or say. Yeah. And that's one of the things I think that I'm really glad that you're talking about this because we need to communicate to everyone that it's important to talk about it. It's important to let people know exactly mm. what's going on. You know, we don't do that with other illnesses. We mm. don't keep them, you know, hidden behind um, brick walls. We actually talk about them. And this is one that really needs to talk and particularly men. So I really admire you actually, Wayne, genuinely admire you 
because you stood up, you stood in front of the media and you told us exactly what was going on for you. That's very nice of you and I appreciate that. I, I, I speak publicly a lot and have done for a number of years. It's a privilege and it's a responsibility because sport has given me a vehicle coupled with my lived experience that I can share my story in the hope that that connects with somebody else who may be dealing with the same type of issues that I was dealing with. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my sporting career but I'm just as proud of what I've been able to do through my lived experience and post-football career. And, mm -hmm. you know, your show is really important because we normalise something that we don't often know about simply mm -hmm. by talking about yeah. it. Exactly. And so some of the things, I guess, to help everyone else that's listening to the show find out about, what are some of the, the symptoms, I guess? So you talked about crying and, yep. and, you know, being unable to control that. Were there other things too that sort of led you to understand that perhaps it is... You know, clinically yeah, depression. I did a lot of things that didn't help me for yeah. a period of time and self-medicating through alcohol, a borderline alcoholic, and I did that because I didn't have skills or an ability to deal with it, so yeah. I tried to numb the pain. The irony of alcohol, it's a depressant. It is. Add depressant to a depressed person, you become more depressed. Uh, isolation, um, locking myself away from my partner, my friends, very social normally, so I would withdraw from that and um, uh, not getting the appropriate help, not choosing to accept the help that was given to me. Yeah. So there's some of the things, I guess, that I hope that the viewers listen to and notice that, um, you know, these are potentially signs for depression. And it happens to all of us regardless of, you know, what field we're in or how successful we are in our, mm. in our lives. So thank you very much for coming to the show and speaking to us. Thank I really you. appreciate it. So after the break, the CEO of Beyond Blue will be letting us know what resources are available and what we can do if we're worried about our loved ones. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Our, our mission is to, is to create an Australia that understands depression. Georgie Harmon is the CEO of Beyond Blue, an independent and bipartisan not-for-profit organisation working to create an Australian community that understands depression and anxiety, empowers people to seek help, and supports recovery, management and resilience. So Georgie, can you tell us a little bit about what Beyond Blue does? Sure, we're, we're there every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for anybody um, who might be struggling, friends and families um, who might you know, be living with someone who's experiencing depression. So you can pick up the phone and speak to one of our counsellors 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we're in schools, we're in workplaces, we're doing a lot of work with business and industry at the moment to build mentally healthy workplaces. Um, and we're just generally out there in the community on social media, in the media, uh, running campaigns to raise awareness. And when you say raising awareness, you mean raising awareness of like mental illness about depression and anxiety? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So our, our, our mission is to, is to create an Australia that understands depression yeah. and anxiety so that everybody can live that to, to their best possible mental health. Mental health is something we should all aspire to. Yeah. And, and do you think that the message is getting out there? Because just before I say that, in my opinion, I think that Beyond Blue is doing a great job. I think getting out into the media with the advertising mm. and, and getting people talking about it. But do you think that they're getting the message out there? Look, I, I, think, I think we are getting the message out. And it's not just us. There's many great organisations um, working very hard in this space. But, you know, the, the four million people connected with us last year. Wow. Um, every month we have 1,500 new users or, on our online forums. Um, we're seeing record numbers of people calling our support service. And why is that? I think because people are feeling like, you know, they're recognising the signs and symptoms of depression more. They're realising that um, it's, it takes a strong man to actually talk about the fact that he might be struggling. It takes a strong woman to talk about the fact that she might be struggling. So I think people are, are reaching out more and more for help and, and also helping, uh, seeking support for their friends and families as well. And it sounds like what you're saying, Beyond Blue really is a multimedia organisation. Absolutely, almost. Yeah. So that you, you... yeah, so look, we're, we're, we're everywhere. I mean, I say we're in the places where people eat, sleep, learn, work, play. Um, so we're around the kitchen table, we're, we're on social media, we're out there on people's TV sets with our campaigns. But you know, we're doing the very simple stuff as well, just, just chatting to people, talking to people, and again, being open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for people to give us a, a, a ring and just talk things through with us. And, and what sort of advice would you give people? Because it's a, it, it is a really hard area. Mm. People aren't sure 
what to say, whether to talk about it, whether to share their story. What sort of advice does Beyond Blue give to people? Well, if someone calls us for the first time, I'd say, well done. Great. I'd say, welcome. And I'd say, this is the start of the rest of your life because you've taken that single one step for your mental health. Recovery is possible. There is great and effective treatment out there. You need to talk to people that you trust about how you're feeling. Open up and keep talking about it. And don't look back now, you know. There is help out there. There's great, uh, th there's great people like yourself out there, you know, running practices. There's online therapies. Um, but even just sitting down with a mate and talking about how you're feeling actually helps uh, build your resilience and helps you to kind of understand that you know, you're not alone. Um, this is a very common illness, yeah. very common illness. There's a million Australians living with depression right now. Yeah. And that's the message we really need to get out there is that it is, it's important to be talking, it's important to have the conversation happening. With Beyond Blue, is there, I don't know how you, your organisation works, but do you have specific areas that you target at different times? Is mm. there a particular target for this year, for example, yeah. or, or different areas that you're looking at? Look, we're here for all of Australia. We, we don't care what age you are, what stage mm. of life you're, you're at, whether you earn a million bucks or you earn a dollar. Um, uh, you know, we're there for all Australians. And because depression doesn't discriminate, you know, it can affect any one of us at any point in any time in our lives. Mm. Um, but, you know, there are particular groups that we do focus on from time to time. We've been doing a lot of work targeting men. Yep. Um, so our man therapy campaign, which features uh, Dr. Brian Ironwood, um, yep. who's hilarious. Um, but, but more recently, his, uh, his runaway friend, Davo who's a tradie, Ooh, okay. yeah. he's, yes. a, he's a bit, bit yeah. of a larrikin is Davo. And really they so, use humour to kind yeah. of bring men in and then there's a very serious message underneath um, and we know that when men check out man therapy, um, they go on and actually see their doctors, they talk to their partners, they talk to their mates and they start that journey to recovery. So what would be the biggest piece of advice or the biggest thing that you would like to communicate with the audience in terms of you know, Beyond Blue's work and, and I guess in terms of depression as well? Uh, uh, look, it's very simple. Depression does not discriminate. Mm. It is nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Um, it is not, it's no different to, you know, being diagnosed with diabetes mm. or or um, being diagnosed with cancer. It is it's an illness, but it's something that you can get better from. Absolutely, we need to understand that we've got it and then start getting treatment. All right, so thanks Georgie so much for educating us a little bit about what Beyond Blue does. Um, after the break, we'll bring back Wayne Schwoss with Georgie to tell us a little bit more about what he is doing. Stay tuned. Beyond Blue have done an amazing job in the 15 years that they've been operating. <laughs> Wayne Schwoss is back with Georgie to talk to us about his work with Beyond Blue. But firstly, it's been quite a number of years now since that grand final where you were at your lowest moment. Tell us a little bit about um, football clubs these days. Do they talk about mental health? Or? Yeah, yeah, look, I think that they do a much better job. I still think that there's a significant amount of work that we can do at the elite level. Um, and I would say that simply by this example, we have a significant investment into resources and staff around the physical recovery of injuries, which yep. I think is first class in this country. We might have one psychiatrist or one psychologist. I'd like to see a diversion of some of that money so that we have welfare officers, we have more psychologists, so we're not only treating the physical injury and recovery of players, but we're also taking care of the emotional, the person behind the athlete. We can't lose sight of that. I'm encouraged by the work that the AFL is doing. Um, I think that the broader challenge for the AFL is if we really embrace this, yeah. there's no better vehicle in this country than sport to really but start to further, I guess, work on ca capitalise and leverage off the work of Georgie's organisation Beyond Blue because sport is a great conduit to mm. get people talking. Yeah. And actually, I think I read somewhere in the papers that you suggested to the AFL to actually have a mental health game. Is that is that right? Uh, no, we have the Beyond Blue Cup. Yes, George so and we, I we have, have spoken yeah, about we, it. We have. A, we've actually been chatting in the wings to yeah. this evening. So we've got grand plans for <laughs> this have. space. Oh, fantastic! Um, but look, you know, as Wayne said, sport is a fantastic vehicle, not only because it reaches millions of people. Um, it, kids look up to to blokes like Wayne. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they take in the, the things that Wayne and their other heroes 
talk about. Yeah. So you know, this is a, it's it's a great platform upon which we can we can keep educating, we can keep breaking down that stigma, and we can keep encouraging people to get help. And I think it's really important, you know, if if Wayne Schwoss can have depression, then anyone can. It, and as as you've both said, and we all know that it isn't about how much money you earn, what position you have, how much you, you know, are successful in your career. It is an illness that can affect absolutely anyone. And I know that with your work with man therapy, you're, so Beyond Blue is managing um, man therapy, but you're actually involved in that too. Tell us a little bit about yes, it. Yes, uh, Brian is a favourite of mine. <laughs> uh, I like his humour. And I think um, Georgie's point uh, earlier on in the show was humour is a great way of diffusing a situation. But look, I, 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 as I said earlier on, I'm, I'm privileged and take the responsibility very seriously to be given opportunities such as, you know, a program with um, Man Therapy to share my story and, and, and that's to educate and connect with other people out there. And it's not, look, I'm no more courageous than anybody who's dealt with it. I'm just lucky that I was given the support and the help in order to get healthy and well. And rightly or wrongly, sport and athletes are seen as role models. And this is something that, um, an opportunity that I've been given and I'm always happy to put my hand up and be involved. And I think for what it's worth, Beyond Blue have done an amazing job in the 15 years that they've been operating. And is the man therapy getting the message out there, do you think? Do you think it's working? Look, it, it absolutely is working. We, we, we evaluate everything we do and we know from the first burst of the campaign that it's reached about half of all Australian men wow. and, the, and the women and, and others who love them. Yeah. So. Um, you know, Dr. Brian talks about therapy so manly it'll put hairs on your brain. <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's, as I said earlier, he is very, very funny and we get men in that way. But then we direct them to do Brian's mind quiz, um, which is basically a, a, a psychological uh, distress test that really assesses whether or not you're at, you're, you're at risk of depression. Um, and then if you reach a certain score, it'll point you to another part of the website to say, OK, look, you really need to start thinking about getting some help. Here's some places you can go. So very practical stuff. Yeah. So, so the message for the man therapy really is to, to get men talking and get it out there in the community that it is something... It's, it's, it's helping men to realise um, that they're not 10 foot and bulletproof. Um, that to be strong, you have to stand up to what's going on inside sometimes. But the, mo the main message of, of Brian and Davo is take action mm -hmm. because there's people who depend on you. And in fact, if you're not right, nothing's going to be right. And just to add that, I think that's um, spot on, but we're not good at recognising things ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if we do, we're not particularly good at doing something about it. Yet that changes when you hear it from somebody else, mm -hmm. when it's said by somebody mm -hmm. else, because you connect with their story. And I think that that's a real subtle way of engaging, not only males, but the broader community. If we can continue to share and talk about it, we're connecting with more people. Every time we connect, there's an opportunity for help. And that's really the point of this show too. And so thank you both for being a part of it. It is about letting people know about depression and you know whatever else is out there but getting people to talk getting people to see that um you know it, it is an illness it's okay there's help out there go to the beyond blue website i'm sure that there's lots of different look, things look there is we've got a great website and and just that just on that you know talking about it people are quite often worried about what to say what not to say um, will I make things worse? So we've got a great resource called Have the Conversation. If you go to our website, beyondblue.org.au, Google find the, Have the Conversation, great resource. We'll teach you, take you through the steps of having that safe conversation. Yeah. Look, I would really like to say a huge thank you, a genuine thank you to both of you for spending a lot of time here tonight being part of the show. Um, they, they've been great. They've opened up the conversation about depression and mental health, and they help us to realise that we're not alone that there is help out there and all we have to do is tell someone and speak to our doctor for advice. So thanks again for watching The Sally Ann Show. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and we want your feedback. So contact us on our Facebook page or follow me on Twitter.